welcome back to the second part in this coloring process video. And uh, just tuning in, I have two. Well, this is a third video. I've got, uh, or the second coloring video. I've got uh, two inking videos and one previous coloring video. Uh, so if you haven't seen those, then go check those out as well. I'm trying to get the whole process here uh, and basically this is just a design that I'm coming up with on my own and uh, I'm using I used uh, sketchbook pro and illustrator for the inking and uh, and the sketching and I'm using Photoshop for the coloring and basically this is just a I guess a, a concept for a t-shirt design, poster design, what have you. Uh, and this is for a, a bike rally. And as you'll see, I'm, I, I've, I've already laid down the colors, the flat colors. Now I'm working on the, the shading, trying to get some, uh, some depth and some volume to this piece. Um, really, there's... You know, it's, it's up to your own personal preference how you choose to uh, uh, add your shading, your highlights, uh, you know, on a piece. Uh, there's lots of different ways to go about it. Um, and I don't really have a set way that I do it. I just uh, go along and, and really just basically by feel, you know, whatever I, whatever I feel looks right, looks right is what I keep doing and and so you see a lot in my process where you know if I if I'm not liking the way it's going I'll just get rid of it and start over and that's one of the great things about using layers is that you you know when you get to a point where you like where where, where it's at then you can flatten it down and really start getting to painting um, this I'm trying to trying to keep it from being too too painterly. I mean, I want it to be. Uh, it's a graphic. It's a graphic design. So uh, I don't know. I'm just. I'm just playing with with several different things. Um, important thing to me uh, to keep in mind when you're when you're trying to add some depth to a piece is uh, one thing you have to you have to understand where your light source is coming from, uh, and then you want to lay down. A base color you know that's going to be your your midtones and then you want to have you have to figure out how you're going to put in your your shadows and how to put your highlights in uh you know you can have them real uh contrasty uh where you, what i mean by that is is uh you know there's a definite definite line uh where your your shading ends and where your highlights begin uh, and it, it depends on what type of material you're you're trying to uh, to have if, if you've got something that's that's really glossy uh, metal any type of metal you're going to be having a lot a lot more of a contrast between your lights and darks it's it's, it's not necessarily going to be as much of a gradient as it is uh, more of a of a actual linear uh, edge to your your shading like you see on the forks uh, it's it's pretty much you know lined out really good I mean you can you can definitely see where the the lights hitting the bars and that's because it's you know it's it's round it's uh, it's metal um, but then if you look at the the tank I'll have not really a not really blended, but it is more blended than what's on the forks. I don't know. It's it's all your personal preference because there's no you know there's no real right or wrong. You know when you're doing uh, when you're doing anything that has to do with art because uh, some of the best art in the world is stuff that's totally totally off the wall. Uh, all just, just depends on what type of look you're going for. Um, and this one, I'm just—it's pre, pretty much going. Uh, it's it's morphing as it's 
as it's going. As I progress, I decide that I want to do this, or I decide I want to do that. And uh, like I said, there's this is not for any specific uh, client or, or job or anything. So I've got some leeway as far as changing things midstream that, I would, that you normally wouldn't have. Uh, but anyway, um, I did I did some uh, some shading on the on the green portion of the bike, and now I'm doing the metal, uh, basically a a black and green bike for the most part, and the green is more of a matte finish, and uh, the black is more glossy, obviously than the than the green portion of the bike. Uh, let's see here. Let's see what I can talk about. I'm thinking uh, that I'll be able to get this finished up in one more video uh, after this. Um, we'll see. We'll see. And as I'm doing this, I notice, you know, that there's some things that I'm forgetting, you know, like I... I uh, that star on that uh, cover, I need to change back to white. Uh, my discs, my brakes, I need to put some color on those. I still don't have any color on them. Um, but I will in this video, I'll, I'll start to uh, separate the bike from the background. Right now, it's it looks real flat. Uh, there's nothing really separating that bike from the background other than the fact of the perspective. Uh, that you can see that it's got the shield. It's, it's not completely centered on the shield. It's, it's you know, there, there's some of the shield behind it. Uh, so obviously that would put the the skyline behind it. But there's nothing really popping that motorcycle out. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna fix that here in this video. Um, we'll see here in a minute how I go about that. Um, trying to make those those pieces, those lights, whatever they are, uh, a little shinier. Now here I'm going to fix the headlight a little bit, trying to make it look a little bit like a headlight. I don't really like how I how this is ending up on the on the light, but uh, I'll work on that some more here and probably on the next video and uh, try and fix that up a little bit. Not really sure how I was going to go about that. <laughs> But here I'm putting on some highlights. Um, once again, I'm going off the photo reference that I have. So I'm trying to keep the lighting the same as the photo reference. It just makes it easier. Um, so yeah, so you put your, put your highlights down in there. Uh, I think after I get done with these highlights, I'll start on... Pushing, pushing the background back and bringing the, bringing the bike closer up front, separating it a little bit. I'm still not liking my highlights on the, on the green yet, but uh, we'll see if I can adjust that a little bit here in the next couple videos. Get that seat. That seat's supposed to be a leather seat. Uh, once again, going off the photo reference, and uh, not really liking how that's turned out. I mean, it's 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 okay, but I need to work on that some more. Definitely. Okay, so now I'm trying to see. Uh, I decide what I'm going to do. I'm going to separate this out with a white border. And if you look, the idea was good, but then I realized something in my line work. Since I hadn't planned this out before that this was what I was going to do, uh, when I did my, uh, my inking, before I brought it into Illustrator, uh, I had all the ink all in one layer. Now, if I would have been thinking about doing this from the beginning, then I could have kept the uh, the motorcycle ink on uh, on its own layer and the other ink on a on a separate layer. That way, I would have had uh, some space 
between the uh, between the, the inks. But since I didn't think of that, uh, all the ink is on one layer. And so I have a problem when I come to any any ink that is not concerned with the bite. If you see the right at the uh, the buildings, that ink goes around on the uh, on the texture, the spatter texture on the back, uh, that needs to be covered up as well. So what I ended up having to do is put another layer on top of the ink layer and go back with the white on that to get rid of those those spots. See, like right there. So that was a, a snafu that I made in my inking process because I, I wasn't thinking that far ahead. I look at it and uh, we'll continue on with this on the next video. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>